Good afternoon, YouTubers. This is uh, Joe Kersey here on Monday, August 19th, at about uh, a little after 3 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. Um, I'm going to spend a moderate amount of time. I don't think it's going to be 30 minutes or anything like that. Uh, discussing in a, an exchange I had with a fellow in the, in the comment sections, well, the comment section of the uh, Wall Street Journal on the 17th of August, uh, 2013. And it involved uh, commenting on an article called uh, Russian gays look to the United States for asylum. Now, apparently, since this uh, Putin instigated legislation uh, passed that says that, you know, you can't talk about being gay to anybody under the age of 18 over there, and that you can't publicly demonstrate in support of various rights and, uh, well, rights, human rights for gays uh, in Russia, despite the fact that uh, gay sexual acts are not criminalized over there. Um, a number of uh, gay folks have been applying for asylum, political asylum, uh, in the United States. And uh, now, uh, you know, I mean, I, I really do care about the United States. I, I dearly love this country. I particularly love our Constitution. Uh, but, for, <laughs> but for the life of me, given the social attitudes over here among, you know, large numbers of people, um, I mean, you know, and, and given the fact that getting asylum in the United States is moderately difficult, I mean, why, why wouldn't you want to go to Canada? You know, apply for asylum in Canada. Um, United Kingdom's, you know, not a bad, bad choice either, but it's a little harder to get asylum over there, as I understand, than it is in Canada, maybe. Well, be that as it may, they're applying for asylum in the United States, and, um, so the Wall Street Journal wrote an article about it. And like a moth to the flame. Now, I've, I've, I've held off interacting in the Wall Street Journal comment sections here for about the last, well, pretty much better part of two, two and a half weeks. But there's just some things, and sometimes you got to say stuff. So I'm going to kind of, you know, read you some read you this exchange. It, 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 it actually took place over the better part of uh, almost 24 hours because I put something up and, re and this guy, re well, this guy put something up, I'd reply, then he put something up, then I'd reply, and, and, uh, and it, it tapered off toward the end. But I think it's worth going through because, you know, he, this, this fellow, my interlocutor is clearly a very intelligent, you know, um, He's borderline bigoted, but not really. Uh, fellow who actually, I think, was making some sort of genuine effort to understand my position. He was a bit sarcastic, but okay. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think, uh, I think he might be representative of, of a number of folks that while... Uh, aren't overtly bigoted, aren't overtly hateful. Uh, they just can't get past a certain, I mean, they, they can't get, well, they can't get past the B, the BF, B, the BFing issue is what it amounts to, I think. But, but, you know, let's assume that that's not an issue. I think there's just certain, certain things they can't get past. But I think, on the other hand, I think they, they have a certain, more or less genuine attempt to want to understand gay folks. 
So here we'll, we'll sort of start into this, and I'll comment as I go along. Um, now this fellow, I'm not going to use this guy's name. Uh, but uh, it's the same fellow throughout. You know, Yes, we love gays, especially on Wall Street, since they are very competitive and their love relations are based on easing the hurt of the narcissistic injuries they give one another, which increases their sexual desires. Well, there's just a, there's just a, there's about five assumptions contained in that one sentence, but without getting, without deconstructing that in detail. Uh, the Russian gays should try above all to get jobs on Wall Street. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, West Hollywood, if they have acting ability. Otherwise, they will meet the same attitude they experience in current Russia and the rest of American towns. It goes without saying they will not be welcomed into the U.S. military, which is now very hungry for heterosexual females needed to satisfy the heterosexual males who currently are experiencing extremely high testosterone levels and high levels of sexual aggressiveness and are prone to gay bashing. On the U.S. Army base where I work, there are a lot of good-looking girls, and they all say they want a relationship, and they're all very popular, but all the soldiers want to do is have sex with them. Better for them if they stick to meeting each other in the laundry rooms in Mother Russia. Now, this got seven, seven recommendations as of about a, two days ago. Well, I mean, I mean there's, there's just tons of material in that second little group of assertions and sentences as well, isn't there? Anyway, so I said, uh, being gay myself, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree with most of your underlying premises. But some script writer should buy your idea and develop a sprawling series, somewhat like Arrested Development, with many intermingled storylines and characters developing each of these premises and proposals. Set in Russia, Hollywood, Wall Street, and an American small town with gay characters from all these places. And of course, on a military base seething with sexual tension, innuendo, and coercion. More than three seasons of material here, I hope. I can't wait for the opening laundry room scene and discussion. Maybe there could be four of them, one in each main location. Well, I got, I got three recommendations on that. Not that I'm whoring around for recommendations. Uh, and so uh, then somebody chimes in, not the same guy that was above. Uh, why do you call yourself gay? You are homosexual. Who is anything but gay? Tell it like it is, or better yet, just keep it to yourself. Ah, oh, yes, the old, the old keep it to yourself jab. Oh, I'm so stunned. And then, in response to Mister, you know, the second fellow, not the first one. While I have rarely in my life achieved the euphoric level of being gay. in the late 19th and early 20th century use of the word. I am often extremely happy. And some of that happy, <laughs> happiness relates to how I see the world because I am gay. Not a clinical state that implies a disease, as with the term homosexual. I would not mention it at all, shove it in other people's faces, as some would have it. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that, because, you know, a lot of times it is shoving it in people's faces. Except that it is relevant to today's discussion. Two recommendations. Again, that's, I shouldn't muddy the waters with that. And then we have uh, the, the first fellow coming in again, and... And he says, uh, re, re some of that happiness because I see the world because I'm gay. How I see the world if I, because I'm gay. 
Now, and this this is a very actually this is a starts off as a very intelligent question. I am very interested in worldviews, as am I. I be, I became fascinated with the whole idea of a worldview once I heard the term Weltanschauung, and wouldn't you know it, he uses it. Can you explain how the Weltanschauung of a gay person is different than that of a heterosexual person, or as I call them, straights? But I spell it S-T-R-A-T-E-S to differentiate it from S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T because spelling it the way I spell it highlights the fact that there are two very different worldviews out there. Like it or not, there are two very different worldviews. And then this fellow goes on to ask, is it con... Now this is a phrase I've never encountered before and if anybody out there has encountered it and can explain it to me, I would be deeply grateful. Grateful. How is it different? You no, know, you know, how is it different than that of a heterosexual person? Is it cognitively? Is it a cognitively integrated worldview? Cognitively integrated. Now I'm, you know, I I'm not I'm not the stupidest knife in the drawer, but this this is eluding me a bit, guys. Oh, then he he does define it a bit. I.e., does it define a system that is well integrated? Again, I'm what's that quite I, well integrated and provides a reference towards infinity? Parenthesis, good faith, close parenthesis. A reference towards infinity of a world that continues on, parenthesis. Disregarding progeny, which obviously homosexuality does not provide for. However, there are plenty of progeny. Close parenthesis. Of a world that continues on, or is a nar or you know, or is a nar or is it a narcissistic view with a lot of cognitive disparities? that simply fails to support a world that can last into the future and simply exploits the present state of mankind, or does it fundamentally posit that the current world will not last into the future? Is it political nihilism? I love that word. Does it foreshadow the end of the world that projects itself Onto, interestingly, onto, not into the future. Onto the future? Or does it consider itself simply a freedom to be, quote, quite different, unquote, in a world, excuse me, that continues in despite of its rejection of that world? Now, that was, that was one long paragraph. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to drop down just a hair because I, I addressed that one long paragraph answer in my subsequent answer, but because of the way they lay out the comment sections, I can't really run through it in a consecutive way. So I, I said, uh, Mr. The few occasions where I'm extremely happy essentially happen as most other folks' similar occasions. Spending a fine evening with friends and a good meal. Seeing my son, daughter-in-law, and grandson when I was working, knowing that I had done a very good job during a difficult case. Lay reading well in church. Things of that nature. The idea of a different Weltanschauung for straight, and again, I use the misspelling deliberately, and gay folks is one that occurred to me in my late teens. We really see a lot of human interactions quite differently. Power relationships, role relationships, assumptions about various folks' motivations. As to most of the questions raised in, in your longer first paragraph, which I just read you, the shortest and best answer I can give you is, 
I am a believing and committed Christian, and therefore know that all of the future-related issues you raise will ultimately be addressed. Okay, now I'm going to read you his second paragraph and then give you my answer to his second paragraph. Uh, okay. Second paragraph coming from this fellow. I understand we are on different sides of the wall. Now see, I, yeah, the, the guy's really making an effort here, I think. I understand we are on different sides of the wall. What I am trying to under <clears throat> what I am trying to determine is whether you believe it is important that we understand each other or whether we are simply on a path to destroying each other. Fairly apocalyptic, isn't it? Uh, in which only gays or heterosexuals can be dominant. Interesting, he said gays this time rather than homosexual. Uh, can be dominant. You know, so there's a parallelism there, there and there for all you rhetoricians out there. <clears throat> can be dominant or politically survive. I cannot imagine gays believe in creating a world that lasts into the future as a satisfactory habitat for their progeny. Am I missing something? Uh, now, that, I, I ran over that too fast. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, are we on a path to destroying each other? In which only gays or heterosexuals can be dominant. I cannot imagine gays believe in creating a world that lasts into the future as a satisfactory habitat for their progeny. On the other hand, you know, a lot of his stuff has been directed to the idea that we don't we can't create progeny, so, I mean, that's, I'm puzzled. Um, am I missing something? I.e., what is the worldview of a gay person that makes you extremely happy? Thanks. And then his name. Right. Well, um, I, I then, um, I, I replied to the second paragraph this way. Uh, as to the second paragraph, which I just read you, I have no wish to destroy straight people. Unlike many straight people, clearly have the wish to destroy gays. Well, VD, large, large parts of the American South, and I guess what's going on in Russia, which was the genesis of this article that started all this. What amazes me, there's, you know, large parts of people in the United States everywhere that want to destroy gays, and, and even among people who are fairly well educated and ought to be at least, you know, if they don't like gays, at least ought to have enough, quote, you know, uh, classical liberal, not, not the left-wing liberal stuff that's called liberal nowadays, but the classical 18th century liberal a attitude to uh, uh, no better. You, you better not, you better not screw this up. Uh -huh. Um the emphasis on reproduction as an imperative for all humans that can and wish to reproduce. Uh, now, see, I've, 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 I'm sorry, I apologize. Let's go back to this. <clears throat> the emphasis on reproduction as an imperative for all humans as opposed to <clears throat> simply having a critical mass of humans that can and wish to reproduce is a stance that has always puzzled me. As I implied, I have a son now, thanks be to God, a grandson, and now, thanks be to God, a grandson. But that son arose from a time when I was living as a deep cover spy <coughs> in the straight world, and while I love him deeply and do not regret his existence or the turmoil of all of that, all the, all of that caused in my life then, if someone were to ask my advice today, I would not advocate that as the suavest way to conduct matters. I probably have a lot I probably have a lot better idea of what it is to be straight than even the most well-meaning straight person has 
about what it is to be gay. After all, I lived as a straight person for 28 years. Although I pretty much knew I was gay from the age of 12 and probably earlier. Of course, I believe it is important for straights and gays to understand each other. To clarify matters a bit further, I think that the term marriage should be reserved for men and women, but that, but that the tax code should not be used to promote and encourage certain types of reproductive behavior and cohabitation arrangements. Okay. So this guy, this guy sort of, you know, we sort of, you know, were jumping past each other. He then on, he went on to say, this is a very interesting point and leads to the question, do homosexuals discriminate between females and males? Or are they simply oriented towards sexual satisfaction no matter who their partner? I.e. do they have a preference? You know, and then he talks about meeting people who like both men and women who have no preference and he calls them bisexuals. All right. Um, then he talks about gay people, well, he calls them homosexuals, who prefer their own sex and can't actually get turned on by people of the opposite sex. And he, he allows that after a certain amount of, you know, toing and froing, that yes, they're probably gay. Uh, uh, you know, in other words, their own experiences and thus their empathies have to do with the fact that they're exciting and meaningful experiences, sexual experiences with members of their own sex. Okay. So he, you know, the, the guy's, the guy's working here. And all that's well and good, but, but the fact is that homosexuals appear unable to extend their thinking of their philosophies beyond the fact, uh, beyond, beyond that fact, which is why I'm most interested in whether they have a cognitively integrated and holistic, always a term to be suspect of, or be suspicious of, and whether they have a cognitively interested in holistic Weltanschauung or whether they are simply narcissistic types, and of course that's, you know, well, I would argue that 90% of the United States, you know, you know, certainly mainstream media culture is narcissistic. That doesn't, that doesn't justify it, of course. Um... Yeah. Or are they simply narcissistic types without an integrated cognitive view of the world? I still wish I could understand what that means. And therefore should be diagnosed, diagnosed, interestingly, <coughs> as simply, quote, cognitively deficient, unquote. Is this the DS, DSM-5 definition? I'm, I might have to look into that. Uh, the same as those with a narcissistic personality disorder. Well, that's I've heard I've heard that one trotted out before. I you know, what can you say? In other words, and then he says, i.e., do they think beyond their own sexuality and actually have a holistic wealth on Sean? I love the term well anyway. Or do their thoughts simply end parenthesis and activism start activism start close parenthesis, with the recognition of their own sexual orientation. Um, well, I, I, of course, you know, read you in two parts, basically my answer to both of his longer pieces there that I split up into, I think, three or four parts. Um, then, then sort of like the coda, the, the brief coda to all this is... Uh, 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 my my sort of throwaway remark about tax <laughs> tax policy. Uh, he says historically the benefits for heterosexual marriage and nurturing of their children, such as tax advantages, have been used by states to encourage reproduction and family unity, because they were seen as excuse me benefits to the states. Excuse me. Do you believe that heterosexual unions and their involved loyalties to spouses and children are no longer beneficial to the state and should therefore draw no special support? If not, what is your argument that homosexuals also deserve the same historical support as heterosexual unions? Well, 
Yeah, I mean, this guy's got a burr up his behind about reproduction, doesn't he? Um, then I replied, and that will end the whole thing here. I obviously understand the rationale for the differential tax policy. I do, however, think it unjust and discriminatory and think that the tax code should be used only to raise revenue and not to promote certain behaviors that are de deemed desirable or suppress behaviors that may be deemed undesirable. Stable unions of two people of whatever variety officially state-sanctioned or not, are a, clearly a force for a more stable society. I just don't think the tax code is a proper tool to use for this purpose. And uh, at that point, the exchange died off. So, all of which got a little far afield from whether we ought to let these poor Russian guys come into the United States, huh? <laughs> well, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to fight the good fight. That's just all there is to it. So, uh, soldier on out there, folks. Bye-bye, YouTubers.